I think that's how a lot of us feel this morning. Genuinely do. Found that picture picture on this morning on the, the internet. Genuinely thought, you know what? I think that's how a lot of us genuinely feel this morning. Waking up after last night. Yes, another performance oh, was just simply not good enough. Another performance where our players let us down. Another players performance where their players let themselves down. Another performance where the manager was let down by the players. Yes, I don't think he's entirely blameless. And you know I'm a massive fan of Philippe Clement. Um, and but you know what? You criticize people when they do the wrong thing because that's how you help people to get better at what they do. Not that I suspect for a minute that Philippe Clement would ever listen to me. But last night's performance by Rangers was yet another example of when the pressure is on, when they really need to pull out all the stops to do something, they let us and themselves and the club down massively. When the pressure's on, this team do not cope. When the pressure's on, they wilt. When the pressure's on, they hide. When the pressure's on, they revert back to type. And I think the issue we've got here is too many of this team that we are carrying, plus too many of these players that we've signed, are just not good enough anymore. Too many of the players that we are carrying have got two managers already sacked. And I think if Philippe Clement persists with a number of them, he will end up getting the sack himself because they will put him in the same position they put Michael Beale in and the same position that they put Gio Van Bronckhurst in. Time has to come, you know, when we accept that it's not the manager. It can't be the manager. It's the players. You know, you look at this squad, it's pretty much, apart from those awful summer signings with the exception of Jack Butland and Abdallah Seema, it's pretty much the same squad that we've had for the last two to three seasons. And they, they have let us down for the last two to three seasons. The manager has changed, but the results and the performances have not. Therefore, that would lead you to believe that it's not the manager that is the issue, that it is the players that are the issue. You know, there's one thing that I think that's quite clear. This is what we got on, had on the thumbnail slide. Enough is enough. Time to clean house. Honestly, you look at that team that went out there last night and it is absolutely time to clean house. There are too many players on that team that are passengers. There's too many players that are so ingrained with the failure that they cannot shape that mindset anymore, that they wilt, they die it, when it pressure comes on. And that is the issue with this team at this moment in time. And as a fan, as someone who cares passionately for my club, as someone who wants my club to do well, it just hurts. It really does rip the living guts out of you on a daily basis when you see performances like last night. You know, Real Betis and Sparta Prague are no fantastic teams. They're not great teams, okay? They're, they're good, they're solid, okay? But neither of them would do anything in the Champions League. Yet they took six points from Aris Limassol. Rangers have taken one point from Aris Limassol. Now, I'm not going to belittle Aris Limassol and call them a pub team or call them a bunch of part-timers because they're not. They've got some decent players. But by the, by the the if you look and compare... The amount of money spent on our squad with their squad, the amount of money we pay in wages compared to the amount of money they pay in wages, it should not even be a competition. This is like an English Premier League team playing a League 2 team in the FA Cup in England. It shouldn't even be a competition, but it somehow managed to be a competition. A result that's left the group very delicately balanced. You look at the group coming out of, out of that game, and theoretically, theoretically, you know, any one of those top three could get the top two places and Aris could still get the Conference League spot in third. And I really hope to God we don't qualify for the Conference League. The Conference League is an absolute joke of a competition. You know, if we end up in the Conference League, just play the youth team because the focus needs to be on the league, not on winning some tin pot Papa John's trophy ridiculousness. You know, well, I know some of you think the Conference League is great, but you know what? It, it's a sad indictment, isn't it? If that's our best hope. We've dropped out of the Champions League. We drop out of the Europa League and we end up with the third prize. We end up with the booby prize. It's not good enough. It simply isn't good enough. Last night, we had an opportunity to go top of the group. That league table could look so different this morning if Rangers had put a performance on last night. It would have been 10 points, clear a Betis, go to Betis, get a draw, win the group. But no, as usual, you know, they go and bottle it. And I was reading on X this morning, CJ Novo, CJ Novo said that, you know, he tweeted out last night, you know, about uh, Betis have lost. Let's go and win and top the group. And then he tweeted out this morning. Then I forgot. I forgot. I support Rangers. I think that's probably the best way to summarise it all. You know, that performance last night was dire. It was absolutely dire. Um, the only player 
who covered himself with any glory last night. Well, there's only to, actually no, there's two players that I'm going to give pass marks to. Before I talk about those players that were let us down, those players that are an absolute damn disgrace, I want to just start with a positive. I'm also near the end of the video going to talk about how we could possibly get this better in time for Sunday against St. Mirren. So hang on for that. Okay, so look, the obvious one we all know. The obvious one last night was Ross McCausland. Ross McCausland should have started last night. Ross McCausland is on a high, obviously, after some great performances and signing that new contract. And when Ross came on, he made a huge world of difference. He looked lively. He took, the, took, their, took their players on. He went at them. He created chances. He, he got one goal. He could have easily had a second goal. You know, he was too honest for his own good. You know, not going down in the penalty box when he was fouled. He, he was absolutely fantastic last night. I gave May out of 10 because he was a breath of fresh air. And it kind of makes you think that what if we actually tried a few more of these young players? What if we actually tried Cole McKinnon, Bailey Rice? You know, those, and Zach Lovelace would be one of the ones, but he is injured at the moment. Why not try these players? Because Adam Devine, Robbie Fraser, why not try them? Because Ross McCausland was the best player on that pitch last night. Better than all those people we've spent millions and millions of pounds on. This lad, who's just turned 20, was the best player on that pitch. He showed more heart, more fight, more bottle, more passion than the rest of the rest of them put together. With perhaps the exception of one player who I'm going to talk about in a minute. But if you take the other nine players, the other eight players, Jack Butland, obviously, as well, doesn't deserve any criticism. But if you take the other eight players, put all their, their fight, bottle and passion up, it wouldn't even half fill Ross McCausland's cup. Why not? give Bailey Rice a game. Is he any worse than Cifuentes? Is he any worse than any of the players that were out there today? Would he show the same bottle fight pattern that McCausland shows? Probably would. Would Cole McKinnon? Probably would. Would Zach Lovelace when he's fit? Probably would. Is Zach Lovelace a better player than, than Thierry Odessas? Yes, he is. Is he better than Sam Lammers? Yes, he is. I don't get it. Don't get it. Genuinely. The other person I want to you know give some praise to, and you know this is a guy I criticised in the past, I thought John Lundstrom worked really hard last night. I thought he fought, he battled, and he was trying to do the job of three players in the middle there. Yes, it wasn't perfect. Yes, it wasn't amazing. But he still showed more fight, more fight, more bottle, more heart, more passion than any other player other than Ross McCaws and Jack Butland on that pitch. Jack must be sick to death. I mean, Jack must be looking and thinking, what the fuck have I done here? I mean, there's nothing he could do about the goal. He put up a good save from Kaju, I thought Cash Kafu or Kadu, whatever, that, whatever the guy's name is. I don't really care. But, you know, he put up a great save from him. And he, he's the only summer signing. And, he didn't, and the ironic thing is we didn't even pay any money for him that is any good. And that's a sad indictment. What I want to know is who at this club authorised Michael Beale to go and waste that much money? Who even sat there and looked at the stats of Cyril Dessas and Sam Lammers from the last few years and went, yeah, that's a really good idea. Go and buy those two. Neither of them can hit a cow's arse with a banjo. Neither of them can score goals. Both of them have got about as much talent as a one-legged asthmatic donkey that's blind. But, well, yeah, go and pay seven and a half million for the pair of them. That's a brilliant idea, Michael Bill. Go on, you go and do that. Genuinely don't get it. Understand, don't get it. Um, You know, you look at the team that was picked last night. And it was the wrong... This is where Philippe Clement got it wrong last night. And he got it massively, massively wrong last night. And but Philippe Clement has been spot on so far with what he's done for this club, the way he's come in, the way he's, you know, changed this club, or he's trying to change this club. He's identified a lot of the priorities and he's working on them. And he has to be given the time to do that. I am not, for a minute, saying that he should go under any pressure. I am not, for a minute, saying that... It is down to him solely because it is not. It is down to the players letting manager after manager down. Clemon is trying his very best with what he has got, but he made a fundamental error last night with team selection. A massive, massive error with team selection. You look at that team that went out last night. Now, he, he, there's nothing he could do about the defence. Davis and Suter had to start and looked horribly off the pace because Suter hasn't played for months. Davis hasn't played regularly either. So that's understandable. But Cantwell does not work on the right-hand side. Todd Cantwell is not a right winger. Todd Cantwell is effective as a 10. Now, Todd Cantwell has got, an, uh, has got dogs abuse this morning for that performance last night. And OK, fair enough. You know, fair enough that he gets, gets criticised. And yes, he hasn't been great this season. But is that down to him or is that partly down to the fact that he has not been used where he should be used? Cantwell is a 10. 
He's not a right winger. He's not a defensive midfield player. He's a 10. Last season, towards the end of last season, we saw him being exceptionally effective as a 10. Now, what I did not understand for a minute, yes, make a change. At any point, great. Send a signal. Send a message. If you're not pulling your weight, you're not doing what you're being told, you're off. But was Todd Cantwell the worst player on that pitch in those forward areas when Ross McCausland was brought on for Todd Cantwell after 30, 35 minutes? Was he? No, he wasn't. He was nowhere near the worst player on that pitch. The worst player on that pitch, and this is, I've, I've, you know what? I've been following football all my life. I've done player ratings loads throughout my life. I've never given a player a zero. Sam Lammers yesterday, I gave zero out of 10 for. This, this bloke is an absolute donkey. He is an absolute joke. He is a fraud. What was it I saw Adam Thornton could have heart and hand call him? Scam Lammers. That's about right. He is absolute scam. This man is not fit to play pub football. Never mind play for Rangers. He is an absolute joke of a of a human being and a joke of a footballer. You know, that substitution was obvious. Of course it was, make a change. But take him off. Don't take the time. Can't put Cantwell in the 10. At least give him until half time to show, can he do something in that 10 role? And then if he isn't doing it, yeah, hook him then. Bring, Sam, bring Tom Lawrence on. But no. He didn't do that, and that's where that's where Clement got it wrong for me. Yes, Todd Cameron wasn't following instructions, but he was being asked to play in a position that he cannot play. Would we play Jack Butland up front? Would we play Connor Goldson as a striker? No, we wouldn't. But this idiot here persists in being picked and keeping his place as a 10 over Canwell, who is more naturally talented, who is a better player, all-round player, than this player here. Yet he persists with Sam Lammers. He should have hooked Sam Lammers after 20 minutes, never mind 35 minutes hooking Cantwell. And the boos, apparently, listening to some of the sources I've got, were not because it was for Todd Cantwell. They were because he didn't take Lammers off and he kept he took Cantwell off instead. Sam Lammers should never play for Rangers again. He is probably, he is worse than Cyril Dessas, and that's saying something. He's probably one of the, probably one of the worst players that has ever played for our great club. He is, and I don't know what about his stats. I thought Michael Bill thought that would he ever be a footballer. I I don't understand it. I don't get it. And if one, if some of you can explain to me what Sam Lammers contributes, I would love that, guys. In the comments, if you can explain to me what Sam Lammers contributes to this team, or what that what Scam Lammers can do. And I know the happy clappers out there won't like me calling him names. I've got some very precious Rangers fans. If you call a player's names, well, you can't call our players names. Whatever. Grow up. Um. Scam Lammers. That's what we should be called from now on. Scam Lammers. The other player last night that was an absolute joke was Jose Cifuentes. The guy didn't look like he could play a pass. The guy didn't look like he knew what he was doing. Didn't, didn't look like he knew what he was out there. Is there a player in that? I genuinely don't know anymore. But to be told, you know, that he's a game changer, a level up, a level upper, a player who's going to come in and change and revolutionise Rangers midfield. What, make it worse? Of course he's made it worse. He was absolutely awful. So you're telling me that... that this young man here is no better than Jose Cifuentes. That this young man couldn't do more than Jose Cifuentes. Don't get it, guys. Really don't get it. Don't understand it in the slightest. You know, yes, at times we were unlucky and we didn't take our chances last night. Yes, but the problem was, if you look at the game again, you watch that game back and didn't, I think this morning, woke up as early this morning, watched the game back and it's gone back to what it was. Passive, boring, slow passing. No, no aggression, nothing. This team carries so many passengers. You know, there's too many people on that team that shouldn't be there anymore. You know, Tav, I'm sorry. I know he steps up with goals and, and this is going to cause, and this is going to cause a shitstorm. I know it is. I'm going to get pelters for this. James Tavernier is, he, he, I know he scores penalties and free kicks and can, you know, but he's a defender. He's paid to defend. He's paid to be a defender. He was woeful last night. Absolutely woeful. He is part of the problem. Not part of the solution. He is part of the problem. Ben Davis is part of the problem. Borna Barisic is part of the problem. Yet again last night, absolutely shocking. If Rid Van doesn't start on Sunday over him, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'll pull my hair out, what little hair I've got. He was awful last night and he was run, their winger ran rings round him. And he was an Aris Limassol winger, for God's sake. 
Lundstrom tried hard last night. Sifuentes, absolute joke. Absolute joke. Lammers, joke. Cantwell played in the wrong position. Seema last night wasn't great. Did okay, wasn't great. De Neo struggled against £6 million. He's still not doing it. He struggled. You look at the bench. Death is awful. Lawrence tried last night. Matondo's not fit. Sterling doesn't get a look in. Roof, never fit. King doesn't get a look in. Divine doesn't get a look in. McCausland was fantastic. McKinnon doesn't get a look in. But it's not just them. You go to Connor Goldson as well, who didn't play last night. Connor Goldson, again, part of the problem. This team needs a Ryan Jack, part of the problem. This team needs a massive clear out. It's time to clean house. It's time in the summer, and it has to be the summer because it can't be done in January because you can't rebuild a team in January. And you're going to have to just get through to the end of the season. But we're stuck in a Groundhog Day-esque thing, aren't we, where bring a new manager in. He's got to work with the players he's got. He's got to try and get the best out of him. And it all falls apart again. We need to get out of this cycle. Something's got to be done. And if you look at the common factor in the failure of Rangers over the last two to three seasons, it's the same players failing time and time again. It's the same core of players who are letting down manager after manager after manager. James Tavernier, Connor Goldson, Borna Barisic. Same players. I could go on. I'm not going to. Ryan Jack, there's, there's the same list of players who season after season after season let the managers down, let the fans down. And I know there's people out there that won't like me saying that. There's people out there say you shouldn't criticise our players. I'm sorry, when they're not doing what they're paid to do, when they're not scoring goals, when they're not defending properly, when they're not fighting like they should do wearing a Rangers shirt, they deserve all the criticism in the world. They're not fit to wear our shirt. A lot of those guys are done. And they need to be got rid of. Philippe Clermont is going to go into it with, with whoever the director of football is, which was supposedly going to be appointed by the end of November. Where's that? What's going on there, James Bisgrove? Another cock up. Something needs to change. And it needs to change now. Because that's two games in a row now where we needed to do something, where the pressure was on and they have bottled it yet again. And it's not the first time. It's not the second time. And it won't be the last time. And something's got to change. Sorry, guys, for the depressing video this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you've picked it up. Let me know your ideas. Look, I think, personally, solutions, I'd love to see some of the young lads get a try. I really would. Bailey Rice, Cole McKinnon, Adam Devine. Can they do any worse than what we see out there? Or would they perhaps show the same heart, the same fight, the same power, passion and bottle as this young man did last night? I think so. I honestly do. I think we need to see on Sunday... A couple of the young players thrown in there and given their opportunity to impress. Because I'll tell you this, they won't do any worse than the likes of Sifuentes, the likes of Barisic, the likes of Tavernier, the likes of Goldson. Tell you that now. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you're on the way out, two things, please. Number one, smash the like. And number two, remember, we are the people.